Tyler here, your favorite local healthy cook, blogger, and owner of Simply Real Health. Today we're going to do something kind of fun. Today we're going to enter into the Bite of Seattle um, Fresh Northwest Cooking Competition, which means we just need to make a little meal with some healthy fresh food local to the native Seattle area, and then maybe I can win. It's up to you, right? If you want to see me on the main stage at the Bite of Seattle this summer, please vote for this video. Um, and vote for this menu, which is really easy for anybody to make, no matter what you do, no matter whether you're entertaining, whether you're making food for your family, or you just need a quick, easy meal um, after work. So today we're gonna make some roasted red pepper harissa, which is made with some local Northwest red bell peppers, some heirloom baby tomatoes, jalapeno, um, and some garlic. We're gonna roast that together in the pan for 15 minutes to make a roasted red pepper and tomato harissa which you're gonna put over our Copper River salmon, of course. You cannot be in Seattle in the summer and not eat Copper River salmon. And then also use it with some asparagus, which is just coming to the end of the season. So at any point in the summer, you can use this sauce also over potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, eggs, other kinds of vegetables, and it's kind of a one-stop shop, which is definitely the way we like to cook over here. So, stay tuned and here we go. So, like I said, this is a really simple dish, and it's one that you can use really over most things that you're going to make um, this summer. So, first things first, we're going to cut the bell peppers open. And don't worry, everything is washed ahead of time. Um, so, when I cut bell peppers, I really like to make sure that the inside membrane is gone, because that can actually be a little bit bitter. And so, you just want to kind of cut it and discard there's some people that think they don't like red bell peppers, um, but I find if they usually take out the membrane, it's less bitter, and that most people do tend to like it. So we're just going to cut, um, I have two small red bell peppers here, and we're just going to cut them into kind of equal sizes, it doesn't really matter too much, and place them on our pan. And if you've ever wondered what to do with the top of the bell pepper, as you can see, um, I just take it and cut on all sides, and that way you don't waste anything. So I'm okay throwing this away, but not the rest of it. You're still paying for it. You might as well use it. So we're going to cut them up, and it doesn't have to be pretty, because at the end of the day, we're just roasting this so that um, we can blend it up. So the, the size of it doesn't matter too much, other than you just want to have it maybe around the same size, so they cook it. So we'll get all of our seeds out here. And bell peppers are usually in season in Seattle um, all summer long, but more so towards um, late summer, so end of July and early August. And there will be tons of them in the farmer's market. So it's a great idea to learn to make some sauces like this that you can kind of buy a lot at once when they're really fresh and really cheap and blend it into sauces that you can later freeze to use the rest of the year. So when I make um, spaghetti squash or other kinds of squash through the fall, I you know, have a lot of this sauce frozen um, and various different pesto sauces frozen from the summertime and you just pop it out and put it in the pan if you put it in a little ice cube tray. Um, that's another kind of great healthy tip to do. So. If you keep it in the freezer, you can use it all year round. So now we have our jalapeno, and I have, you know, I bought kind of a bigger jalapeno because we're doing two of the peppers. So, again, we're going to pull out the seeds, unless you like it really spicy. So, but I usually find with the, the pepper here that without the seeds, it's plenty of spice enough. So, especially if you're going to serve it at a barbecue or a family event, you might want to make sure it's not too spicy on the spice. Okay, jalapeno goes there. And now, we're just gonna cut up our little tomatoes. So this sauce is very, very simple. So just two red bell peppers, a pint of um, baby heirloom tomatoes, or um, a similar amount from the farmer's market. And again, tomatoes will be in season um, pretty soon here in July. So we're just going to cut them up, and that just helps help them roast a little bit better. Okay, so now that we have our peppers cut up, we have our tomatoes on the pan, we're just going to stick a little cube of garlic on there as well. So again, it really doesn't matter, so we're going to blend it up anyways, which is the perfect shortcut. Um, and we're just going to drizzle it with some olive oil. So anytime you roast anything, um, and I think vegetables are the best thing to do because it really brings out the natural sugars and so it makes them taste a little 
want to roast it. And how you want to roast is just like this on a baking sheet. Drizzle some olive oil, um, some sea salt, and some pepper. So you definitely want to use some sea salt, not regular salt. Um, just, it just has a lot more health benefits to it, some natural minerals in it. It tastes a lot better, and it's better for you. So that's that. So we're just going to rub it with our hands here. And we're going to stick it in the oven. So the oven has been preheated to 400 degrees. We're going to stick these in. And it usually takes about 15, 20 minutes, depending on the size of how big you cut your um, veggies. And we'll, we'll keep checking on them in a, in a few minutes. So now that our roasted red pepper harissa is in the oven, um, roasting away, we're going to get the rest of the meal ready. So we have some asparagus here, um, which if you naturally take and snap the ends off, it snaps at the point. Um, where the bitter piece is going to be gone. So it's just an easy way. You don't need to use a knife or anything. Just snap it off with your fingers. Um, I have that on the baking sheet now with our salmon. Um, all of it has the same, just olive oil, sea salt, and pepper. Very basic. We don't need much because we're going to do the um, roast over pepper harissa on everything. And so when you're making this at home, you, you don't need to put the harissa sauce on everything, but I just want to show you how versatile it can actually be. So we can even fit our potatoes on here as well. So literally like a one pan meal, really easy for cleanup. You can do all of this on the barbecue in the summer as well. Um, and again, using any kind of vegetable, any kind of meat, any kind of fish that you want. Um, the trick is to just make sure it's all kind of a little bit coated with olive oil. There's no need to use a ton of it. Um, but just to give it a little flavor and moisture as it's cooking. And definitely, don't be afraid to use your hands, as long as they're clean. Okay. So, there you have it. We've got our asparagus, our salmon, our potatoes, and our sweet potatoes. Um, all this is going to go with the rest of red pepper harissa. Easy, one pan meal, all fresh, all local, all seasonal, and all healthy. What do you know? Okay, we're back. So in about 20 minutes or so, so I think the peppers and tomatoes are ready to go. We're going to pull them out of the oven. Um, and we're going to keep actually the sweet potatoes in and the asparagus in for a little bit longer. I did take out the salmon because it was done. It's a pretty small piece. Um, so you can always take it out whenever it's done. Okay, here we go. All right, so there we have it. Our roasted red peppers, the jalapeno, the garlic clove, and the tomatoes. And we're just going to set this out and let this cool for a minute or two right on the countertop. Um, and then we're going to stick it in the blender with a little bit of salt and pepper and some olive oil and we'll blend it up and we'll be done with our sauce. Stay tuned. So now that they've cooled, we're ready to stick them in the blender and blend away. So sometimes it's easier to do this in batches as well. Um, just depends how big and powerful your blender is. So we'll put a few in. See how it goes. And I'm going to put a little bit of water, and that just helps, um, helps it blend pretty well.
Again, this is Sarah Adler from Simply Real Health. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like what you see, please check me out on my website at simplyrealhealth.com. And with that, don't forget to vote. Thanks so much. Let me tell you about a girl who know. She and my baby and she lives next door. Every morning before the sun comes up, she bring my coffee in my face.